Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry if my voice is not 100%. Uh, I did something stupid on Friday uh, before I drove out to uh, Ithaca, New York and Cornell University where my middle daughter goes to school. I decided, yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll put off uh, recording Monday's sales tip. I'll have plenty of time to do it on Sunday, which is like waving a red flag in front of Murphy's Law and saying, ah, come get me. So I got a call over the weekend. Um, but I am just back, and, and I want to talk to you about the Olympics, and I want to talk to you about the Boston Bruins, and I want to talk to you about the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots, what they all have in common. The, the Olympics are over. I'm kind of bummed about that because I really became an Olympic junkie. You know, I got YouTube TV, which I highly recommend you check out. Holy smokes, for 35 bucks a month, you get a ton of stuff, and you can record everything. So I'd find myself up 5, 5.30 in the morning, watching curling and just not able to shut it off because it's it's a stupid little I can't shut this off. I mean this is dumb. I'm just gonna oh I just wonder oh wow that was a really good throw. <laughs> and I got into it and the Americans won gold which was great. I was bummed about the South Koreans not winning. But in any event, so one of the best things I saw was when the in the two man bobsled, one of the German teams had posted their score and it's the best of four runs. So it's about three miles of going, you know, 75 miles an hour, right? And the last team down are the world champion Canadians. And they finish the, the, they, they crossed the finish line in a dead heat, 0, 0.00 seconds apart from the Germans. And the, and the Canadian team is going nuts. And the German team is going nuts. And the Canadian driver in his, in his uh, wheel man, whatever they call him, were looking around going, why are the Germans going great, going crazy? Well, isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Well, they had tied. So all four of them got a gold medal. And the Germans could not have been happier. They were ballistic for their this other team. They were rooting for the other guy. Recently, I was on the phone with someone from Philadelphia, and I said, all right, listen, there's a, there's a prerequisite here that you've got about five minutes giving me a hard time about, uh, about uh, the Super Bowl and how your Eagles beat my Patriots. And he said, you know what really impressed me? Was the fact, he said, I listen to a lot of sports radio in Philadelphia, and I'm really impressed with the number of New England fans who have called up and said, hey, congratulations, guys. You know, well done. They were really happy for you. He said that was a, sh a sign of great sportsmanship and rooting for the other guy. One more example, and I'll get to my point. Years ago, when the Boston Bruins retired Phil Esposito's number seven, it was agreed by Esposito, the team, and Ray Bork that Bork would continue to, to wear the number seven until he retired and then he would give the number to, of course, it would be, you know, put up in the rafters at the Boston Garden. So they have this ceremony, and Esposito's got the microphone. He says something like, you know, I can't, I couldn't be happier with having such a class act such as Ray Bork wear my number until he retires. And just then, Bork skates over, and, he, and Esposito's looking at him, and he takes off his jersey. He had woken up that morning and had an idea, and he called the then general manager, Harry Sinden, and he said, I got an idea. And so they arranged to have another jersey made that afternoon with the numbers 77 on it, which is why Ray Bork retired and got into the Hall of Fame with the number 77. He, has, he was honoring Phil Esposito. Esposito stood there and said, you know, that was the classiest thing I've ever seen. Now, there's a common thread through these things, something that I truly believe in, thanks to my dad. And when I was at Cornell this weekend, I was very impressed with my daughter, Emma, that she's carrying on this tradition of just simple encouragement. It costs nothing, nothing. My daughter had uh, back surgery a year ago in uh, April or May or something, and the entire janitorial staff pitched in and they bought her a pizza and they sent her flowers. Because every single day she goes in to her lab, she's getting her doctorate there, and she goes into her lab, she always greets the staff, and she knows everybody by name, just like my dad did. And I was really, really touched by that. And they remember these things. You know, she's rooting for the other guy. What are you doing to root for the other guy? Is there a new sales rep that you could sit down with and encourage? Is there a pressman that you could write a note to and just say, hey, thanks very much for the great job? Whether they're above you, below you, whether it's your boss, whether whatever it is, encouragement is free, and it goes a long, long way. Now, I'm not suggesting that you call the winning bidder on a, on a bid and say, hey, great job, you got the commission that I was going to get. But still, you know, there's lots of opportunities in life where we can root for the other guy 
It costs nothing, it goes a long way, and it's just the right thing to do. Hey, have a great selling week, everybody. I'm going to try and get my voice together for ne next week's sales tip, and I'll talk to you then.